Welcome back to another episode of the Tank Series. Luke with Premium Aquatics here. Welcome. I hope you guys are all staying safe, sanitary, and uh, healthy. Obviously, this is not too much fun right now. Although, I am used to working in this office. So, life has moved on pretty much the same for me, unfortunately. But, I'm getting antsy to get outside because the weather is nice. I actually smoked up some pork belly and chicken wings this week, which were amazing. So, firing up that smoker a little bit more. But anyways, I digress. This week, we are looking at here, this box. I've already opened it, I'm sorry. Don't be mad. Let's get on to this product, which is Hanna Instruments Reef 2. This is a professional test kit, which actually, there's just several things included in here. Uh, so what you get with this is the phosphorus, ULR, alkalinity, calcium, salinity, some uh, testing solutions, the reagents, and then some deionized water. So this is the High Reef Kit 2. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check it out. Um, but it comes with a lot of necessities, especially for those that do um, calcium-based corals and are, are dosing calcium uh, and all those sorts and you want to keep track of it. This would be great because it has your alkalinity, has your calcium, um, and has your phosphate because, you know, we always like to keep track of our phosphates and we like to uh, see them, you know, just a little elevated in the tank, not completely zero because there are many corals that do utilize that and it's beneficial to them. So we'll open this up, check it out. Let me get my knife. Alrighty. Uh, this bad boy up and basically it's just everything in here is the individual items all packaged together for nice and easy shipping and uh, purchase so uh, here is our alkalinity measured in DKH this is the phosphorus ULR the 774 here this is the 70024P, which is the 35 PPT salinity calibration solution. It's always nice and handy to have on, and they sell it in big bottles, which is kind of nice. And then we have the calcium parts per million. This is the 758. And I have some reagents, which is for the phosphate, 25 testers, and the phosphate refill reagent, which are just powder. And then I have deionized water. So that's it. Got more to it. Let's now open these all up individually. I'll bring you in closer, we'll take a look at them, go over what each capabilities are, and uh, we'll run a test on one of them uh, for you here, or maybe two or three of them, I don't know, we'll see. But come back. I just realized this unit was supposed to come with a salinity meter. Lucky enough, I actually already have one. This is the HANA Digital Salinity Tester, which obviously measures salinity. It does come with a few starter solutions here in this packet. This was uh, sent separately. Um, I got this a long time ago, just haven't had a chance to use it yet. But this is gonna measure our salinity and our water. And then obviously we have these extra packets here to ensure that our unit is calibrated and always reading properly because there's nothing worse than testing and testing and testing going months and months and months, assuming everything is correct. And then lo and behold, fish, corals, things start not looking great, things may die, or and you're just trying to figure out what it is and you realize that your refractometer, your salinimeter, or anything that you're using is off on calibration. So can't stress enough how important it is to have some solution over handy to calibrate your unit. Alrighty, so with the salinity tester, we are going to go ahead and get it set up. Uh, it is very easy to do. We have, um, some RO water here. This is actually what we could use the deionized water, but because I'm using a bigger bowl, I'm just gonna use RO water so I'm not wasting a lot of that. We need our calibration solutions because we gotta set up calibration on it. So what we're gonna do is simply take this cap off. They do recommend new probes, um, new units here that you should rinse it off. Just give it a little shake there, make sure it's good to go. And then we're gonna dry it off with a paper towel. We'll power it on. Better life, 100%. So we're in the beginning, we're gonna hit the calibration button, go into calibration. 
Now we say, uh, you see it says 35.00 use, which means we need to use our 35 solution. So they do recommend one use. So when you cut this open and uh, utilize it, toss it when you're done. Don't reuse it for future because it could get um, contaminated. So we're gonna insert it into this little baggie, get it down far enough into the solution and they s recommend tapping it just to make sure any bubbles go away and then it'll start recognizing the solution. REC comes up, basically the REC means it accepted it. Then after the acceptance, uh, STOR came up down here and we're good to go. We're now in our measurement mode. Uh, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna rinse it back off again. So obviously we don't want that solution uh, hindering our test. And then um, I'm gonna come down here and actually test this salt water in the tank. Go about one and a half inches deep and you're going to swish it a little bit. Just make sure no air bubbles are on the probe. I am reading at 1.024. Temperature of 78.1 degrees. Once we're done with it, we wanna make sure that we rinse it off so we don't have any uh, salt creep or anything like that remaining. Uh, after you do your test, dry it off, store it on the cap, and we're good to go. Next time we want to do it, they do recommend that you calibrate this every month just to ensure that it's reading properly. So good thing to have these calibration solutions on hand. Um, if you are wanting specific high resolution testing, they always recommend doing a uh, calibration before that just to ensure that you're reading properly. All right, so I have batteries in each of the units. We have our cards, the pipettes, any of the vials that we need, reagents, all that jazz, deionized water. Uh, the calcium is the most in depth, has a little bit more specific. These two are pretty well, very similar. Uh, we both start out with 10 milliliters of water. So we're gonna start with phosphate, go down the run, and I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible while still showing you what we're doing. Just so you know, for each of these, if you wanna see uh, exactly how to do it, this is how we do it. One thing to be very careful of is with these vials, um, I have this uh, little piece of cloth that I get from like when you clean your glasses or sunglasses. Um, you wanna make sure that these vials are kept pristine as far as cleanliness goes. You can get uh, fingerprints, debris, dust, uh, oil from your fingers on there, and that will hinder or could hinder the readings that you get uh, when you're doing the tests. So we wanna be very careful every time you touch it that you're cleaning that back off. So let's go ahead and start with the phosphate. Um, I've, like I said, I've got 10 milliliters of water in here already. So what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. It's gonna pull up C period one, which basically means we're ready to go. So we're gonna take our sample. I'm gonna clean this off because I did touch this. Slide it in here and we'll go ahead and push the button, it's going to start doing uh, its reading on the sample. In the meantime, we'll open up our reagent packet. And then as you can see here, it's gonna be reading C.2, which means we are ready to add in our reagent. Pull this back out, and then gently pour in the powdered reagent. From there, we are going to gently shake this for two minutes. Okay, we're all shooken. We wanna make sure that powder has dissolved, which it has. Now, since I touched the vial, we clean it off again. And we're gonna insert it back into the checker. And now we are going to press and hold this button until a timer starts. It's gonna be three minutes. So we're gonna wait on this for three minutes and then it's gonna give our reading. You could just put it in there and wait three minutes, then press the button once, but we'll let the timer do its work. And while we do that, let's go ahead and just start on the DKH. Same type of setup, we're gonna turn it on. Let's clean off our vial. And then we'll open this up and put it in. Press our button. Now that it says C2, we can open it back up take out the vial, 
and this time we are going to we're removing the cap and we're going to add one milliliter of the test reagent for that we have our one milliliter syringe with our nozzle now that we have that added we'll go ahead and replace the cap and we're going to invert this five times clean off the vial make sure there's no bubbles if there are just tap the glass so that they go away put it back in and this one we just have to press it and it will also start our reading This one is a little bit quicker. As you can see, we have an even 10.0 DKH. So super simple there. That's all set to go. Phosphate is done. We are getting a reading of 0.01, which I am pretty not surprised. I'm not surprised by that because that's pretty much what the reef bot's getting. I think I was at 0.02 with the reef bot. So we're good on both of those. Let's work on calcium. This is different, as I mentioned. We want to start with one milliliters of reagent A. Same type of uh, one milliliter syringe. Add that to our vial. Now we are filling the remainder up to the 10 milliliter line. So basically nine milliliters of deionized water. And we have our pipette to do that. And now we have that filled up. So what we can do here is turn on the meter and we're going to mix in the reagent one with the deionized, invert it three to five times. Then we're going to clean this off, make sure there's no bubbles. Now that we have C1 showing up on the display, we can go ahead and add our vial and we're going to press it. It's going to blink and uh, meet and zero it out. So we are seeing C2 on the display. We can remove this. And now we're gonna add 0.1 milliliters of our test water or sample. And for that, we are using this mini pipette. This is very specific, and this will allow us to be very um, precise in our dosing of 0.1 milliliters. So now here we'll add 0.1. And then after that, we're gonna add reagent B. Place our lid and now we're going to shake it vigorously for 15 seconds so that our powder completely dissolves and then we want all the bubbles to dissipate so we're going to make sure that our bubbles are all gone that our powder is dissolved and then of course wipe down the vial going to put this back into the meter and we'll press the button again We'll just wait for our reading. And there you have it, easy as that. We are at 409 in calcium. There we have it, all three readings are extremely easy to test and come by. The calcium is the most in depth of what you have to do and be very precise with it. Now we just gotta clean up our mess and uh, get these reagents cleaned out and files cleaned up and put them back in the cases. All right guys, that is gonna be it for me. Go check out Hannah Instruments. I'll put a link in the description below for this kit. As well, else I'll, I'll throw uh, links in for everything individually just in case you are looking for just one of these. Super easy to use. I absolutely love these. Um, I, I've not used these a lot, so uh, getting to use these and compare them to a normal test kit, hands down, this is, this is how I would go. Um, it's so much easier, it's simple. You got a little bit of work to do. You still got to pour reagents in and all that jazz, but getting the readings, you're not doing color charts, anything like that to where you can mess up and uh, get that variance. So hands down, go check it out, guys. Uh, Slendid meter is really nice. I love that. That'll be uh, sitting by the tank to make sure I can test everything. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. Hit that bell for notifications to stay the most updated on this system as well as the other videos we're putting out. We'll see you next weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Six feet. <laughs> Peace.